All right, today I would like to discuss concept of black magic, otherwise known as antenna theory. When I was in school, we studied circuits. When we studied circuits, We'd have a voltage source, like a battery, and wires, and then some sort of resistor, or something, that's a load. We had electrons that were supplied by the battery. They would go around through the circuit, through the load, and back to the battery, just like that. And the battery supplied the energy to push the electrons through the circuit. And we got a little bit more advanced because we started talking about AC. Well, with AC alternating current, that means that the electrons move through the resistor this way and back through that one. Because now we have a voltage source and it's AC. And now we have a wire that sticks out here. And then we ground this side. So the voltage source pushes your electrons up to the antenna and back. And up and back. Just like that. Well, somehow the black magic part that generated radio waves and then you could have yet another antenna and then you could measure the voltage with a voltmeter between here and ground and pick up the signal and the question is how do you end up with radio waves out of it Let's go back to the original picture of the circuit and talk a little bit about voltage, current, and what else is going on that maybe we didn't talk about in those classes. So first, let's talk about our picture. This voltage source doesn't just supply electrons but it also pushes them on this wire. And in fact, if this load wasn't here, it would push them all on this wire, like this. So what we would say is, because these electrons are pushed here, the voltage on the wire, which is represented by this green, is high. Whereas the voltage on this wire is low. Well, what has also happened is, is these electrons didn't come from nowhere. They actually came from along this wire. So what you have is, is a higher density of electrons relative to protons in this wire, a lower density in this wire. So effectively, this wire has got a negative voltage on it, at least compared to the wire above it. So you can almost think of it as positively charged. Sorry, there should just be three. And what will happen is, is around each of these electrons, there is an electric field. And the electric field will go from where the electrons are dense to where they are not. So the electric field will mostly go in this direction. But it could as well go around this way. Or around this way but it's going to be mostly straight from one wire to the other and if you measure it with a voltmeter you can measure the fact that there's an electric field now what that electric field is trying to do is push these electrons back onto the smaller onto this lower wire from the voltage source so if you put the load there 
that provides the path for them to flow. But the voltage source, every time it runs in one, pushes them back. And as these electrons flow, that's the current. And the push, due to the electric field, is called the voltage. There's another thing that happens as electrons travel. As an electron travels this way, <clears throat> there will be a magnetic field also induced. The magnetic field is typically taken according to the right hand rule. So this is your right hand. If you hold it, you see it curves around this way. So the magnetic field will actually be a circular pattern around this wire. And as they travel along this wire, it'll be a circular pattern around this wire. But the circular pattern as the electrons go this way will be according to the right hand rule. Uh, let's see, that's clockwise. And then on this side, it will be counterclockwise. So these two magnetic fields will interact and the electric fields will interact. So let's focus on the antenna. I'm gonna draw it horizontally. So these are my two elements. And this is where the feed line comes in right here. It's gonna be a quarter wave dipole. So that means that as far as the voltage, I'm gonna take a picture in time. It's gonna be maximum on the outside. Cross zero maximum on the minimum on the other side so that the voltage is positive on this end and negative on this end in this instance of time the voltage that's fed in here say it's V the 2V on either side and that's because these electrons stack and then they turn around the current however will look like this the current for this instance of time will be flowing in this way and coming back that way. Sorry, got that backwards. Going this way and that way. And actually, in that instance of time, the current will be zero at the feed point. And it will also always be zero out here at the end because the electrons can't just run off the side they have to come back and flow through so what that'll look like is that the current will be this part of the sine wave where it's always high here and in time this will reverse so this is the exact opposite instance in time for the wavelength. It'll look like this. And at that time, the current will look like this. That's magnitude. So going negative up underneath is a negative direction of current, which means current's really going this way. The voltage is also negative at the ends compared to the way that it was before. And the current and the voltage will be matched. So what happens? Well, <clears throat> radio waves are electromagnetic waves. And they occur anytime you have magnetic field and electric field crossing one another at 90 degree paths, changing in magnitude and then they will propagate away from the antenna. So what will happen in this case is as the electrons run and they'll run this way they'll start like this and they'll run that way and then they'll turn around and they'll run this way and then they'll run that way on the antenna When they're both running in this direction is what we're gonna look at. And they're stacking up on the end here. And then they're 
all leaving this end here, which is why it's a negative voltage. Okay? You'll have an electric field kind of concentrated at this end and terminated on this end of the antenna. Let me clean this picture up. Or maybe if we can get it, the electric field is always going to be blue for this. So the electric field is going to go this way. And it may also follow this path. So it's going this like this. It's going like that. From the positive voltage to the negative voltage. And it also changes because a quarter wave away, the voltage collapses completely on the antenna. That's when all of the electrons are kind of in the middle. It's evenly distributed. But then they'll come around and they'll be on the other end. The picture will be opposite. So this electric field will change directions. So through time, the electric field alternates up and down. What happens to the magnetic field? Well, the magnetic field, I'm gonna use purple. As these are traveling this way, by the right hand rule, go around this way, counterclockwise, and this way counterclockwise. And in fact, it'll be biggest where the current is biggest in the middle. So this magnetic field will be huge in the middle. Well, what will happen is, is that's also alternating in magnitude and changing direction because when the electrons, instead of moving this way, when they turn around and move that way, the magnetic field's in the opposite direction. And halfway in between, it's zero. At the same point, the electric field is also zero. <clears throat> so that means that in this region here, above the antenna, or near the middle of the antenna, away from the antenna. You have magnetic fields that are going around the antenna this way and electric fields that are going up and down this way. And they cross one another at 90 degrees and they're also alternating up and down. So that is the beginnings of an electromagnetic wave. Let's just focus on the antenna in the fields for a minute not talk about what the electrons are doing so here's our antenna again and the field originates here and goes there <coughs> at its peak the magnetic field goes around in the middle and that's going around I can't really draw in 3d but you know it's going behind the antenna and in front of the antenna it's really you know if you cut it it would be straight up and down but it's going in a circle around the antenna so if you're kind of looking at the antenna from the top like say right here the electric fields would be traveling out and down. The magnetic field would be going around like this. At this location here, they're crisscrossed. And the definition of electromagnetic magnetic wave is, is that they're both high at the same time and they're both 90 degrees off from one another, the magnetic field and the electric field. And that can induce what we call an electromagnetic wave. And these waves will propagate. So what will happen is, and it's at the speed of light, the wave that happened before it is traveling away from the antenna. It's going this way. The magnetic field out here. It's a bigger circle 
but it's weaker, as is the electric field, and it's going in the opposite direction. This one's going counterclockwise, that one's going clockwise around. So what you end up with, if you were to take a section of this wave that is leaving the antenna, it would look like this. You have the magnetic field traveling this way, and then the electric field it would be 90 degrees out of 90 degrees different in orientation but in sync in magnitude. So this would be the direction of travel. The electric field's running in the horizontal, the magnetic field's running in a vertical plane, so that those two things are linked and then traveling in this direction would be the wave as you go through time. So the, in distance as well, since this thing is traveling, you can talk about it in terms of time and distance. Here is one wavelength away, and that is two wavelengths away. So if you're talking on two meters, this is two meters away where this happens. This is four meters away where this happens. Let's talk about the difference between near field and far field. I'm going to draw the antenna vertical this time. Near field is pretty much anything that happens within the circle around the feed point of the antenna within one wavelength because it takes about a wavelength for the radiation pattern of the antenna to settle out and for you to know what that looks like. So we'll look one wavelength away kind of at what the electric field is doing what the magnetic field is doing. Well, the electric field, in general, at one wavelength away, is traveling from the top of the antenna to the bottom. And it could travel a little bit this way out, this way in, like that. The magnetic field at that point is strongest there, and it's traveling in a circle on this plane. There. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, that means that beyond one wavelength, this is very much the pattern out here. Y'all see that? And what you end up with is if you go very, very far away from the antenna, a few wavelengths, so I'm gonna draw, redraw the antenna smaller. The radiation pattern, just like this. And then on this side, just like that. And then it's symmetrical because there's this circle here. So it kind of looks like a donut. So kind of looking at it from the side, it's broadcasting the best at kind of broad side of the antenna in all directions. But from the top, it's not doing very well, or from the bottom. But if you look in all directions, it goes out sort of in larger and larger circles. So again, let's talk about near field versus far field. In this one wavelength area, there, the propagation looks a little bit differently shaped. It hasn't quite fully formed the donut. Well, if you have anything, any other material, particularly any kind of conductive material in there, it's gonna end up affecting the shape of this propagation. And if you're doing any modeling with a software such as NEC or something like that, and there's any metal within that section or a ground plane or the ground or any other object that could interfere, it should be considered as part of the model. Outside of the model, since these fields get weaker and weaker, the induced currents of something a metal piece of metal or something like that out here it's also going to respond as an antenna antennas work backwards and forward so that's going to cause electrons to move around in that antenna and it's going to make 
of reflection back. Within the near field, the strength of that reflection is enough to cause distortion of the antenna and should be considered. In the far field, you can think of it simply as a reflection. So let's take a second and review. You have an antenna like this. Again, we're going to use a quarter wavelength dipole. It's just the easiest one to think about. And it's got the voltage on it like this. And then that's at the exact opposite time. As far as wavelength, that's a half wavelength away from this one. And the current will look like this. <clears throat> then that induces the electric field as the electrons stack going from the high voltage to the low voltage, just like that. And the current is highest in the middle and in one direction on both sides causes a magnetic field like that. The crossing of the magnetic field and the electric field and also the fact that they're moving up and down causes a wave. So that half wavelength away, the electric field looks like this. And the magnetic field is all still circular and in the opposite direction. It's almost like making ripples in a pond, except that it's with electric fields and electrons. And that is black magic.